Good morning, genealogy friends. <clears throat> Happy Friday. Huh, I'm just looking at my post-it. My handwriting was a little off this morning. That says Roots Tech Connect. For those of you who can't figure out what that H is doing. We are going to talk about Roots Tech today as my Friday resource. But I do also have new pages to share with you and a little bit of general news. So I am going to hop right into it because I'm wiggling a lot. Okay, flip this around. Oh, good morning. I hope you're having a good day. I had a little bit of a late night. Oh, goodness. I swear I check my hair before I get on here. Um, anyway, I'm having a little bit of a late night and a slow morning, but I'm really looking forward to the weekend, so I'm excited that it's Friday. Okay, I mentioned yesterday I'm rolling out new pages, a bunch of new pages, and I'm going to roll them out slowly so that I can introduce them and give everybody a chance to find them as they come out instead of dumping 100 new pages on you all of a sudden. The ones that I'm bringing out today, it's another bundle. This is one that I have been using actually for a little while and I don't know, sometimes I make myself pages and then for some reason in my head I'm like, well, I'm probably the only person that's gonna want these. I don't know why I think this. So let me show them to you. It's the Sibling Family Bundle consists of three pages and you'll recognize them as being similar to other pages in the set. Flip. Okay, the first is this sibling family page that has space for the sibling's name and the other parent and then spaces for the children. This is similar to, there's a children page that looks like this and a cousins page. I like this one because it gives information to fill in for you know, this would be nieces and nephews, and it gives places to fill in their information for the rest of their lives. But um, it is limited to just three people, or three children in a sibling family for these pages. So usually people have to use multiple pages to capture the whole family. The other nice thing about this one, I mean, you can do this with all pages, but because it's very specific about these children came from these parents, if you have a sibling who's remarried and has children with another person, then you just add a different page, changing the parents, and then have the children from that set. Although, of course, there's places to put, you know, whether or not the children were adopted, stepchildren are born out of wedlock. I've actually had questions about this because some people argue, or have not argued with me, but they've pointed out that, you know, in their family, they don't consider adopted children, stepchildren, or children born out of wedlock to be any different than um, other nieces and nephews or other children. I This is not a value judgment here. This is just... From a genealogical standpoint, sometimes that can indicate that there might be other paperwork. If a child's adopted, you might wonder if there's information about the birth family. If a child's a stepchild, you might be interested in finding documentation of the, you know, the other parent. And if a child's born out of wedlock, it just tells you more about the story of how that family was created. Um, but obviously, if you don't want to use these forms then just don't because this is your family book and I certainly am not going to tell you what you need to document. Okay so that's one of the pages. The next page is just a blank page that says sibling family down the side so that you can add any notes or photos that you want to. Here I've got two family photos. Obviously these are fake pages with my own family but um you know, the nice thing about blank pages is that you can do whatever you want on them, whether that's adding pictures of documents, adding photos, or just adding notes. I probably, to be honest, I use forms of blank pages more than I use any other pages in the set. And it's funny how many requests I get that are really just blank pages with something written down the side. I feel like a lot of you are in my same mindset where you're just like, yeah, just give me a blank page and get out of my way. I, I know exactly what I want my page to look like. The last one is this. It's a different take on the uh, the photo tree for immediate family. In this case, it's the sibling family, so you can put the picture of the sibling and their um, spouse or the other parent at the top, and then there's spaces for children. And this one's nice because it gives you 12 spaces for children, so large families um, often can fit on one page using this page. And again, if you have a different parent and you wanted to record different children, you could just um, add in a second, you know, copy of this with the different children. You um, could add in the children and then put a notation on the bottom line. I mean, you just use these pages however it makes sense to you. Um, 
and I just, I'm hoping that these, between the three, that you'll be able to find something that works. Now, they're being sold as a set. It's the Sibling Family Bundle, and you get all three pages, and you get them in all 24 colors, which includes the original 23 colors plus the low ink. Right now, it's just the right-handed pages. I haven't created the set for left-handed, but I will soon. Um, but I don't expect you to use, you know, necessarily all three, but I think between these three options, you'll be able to use one that works for your book. Or maybe you have, you know, maybe for one ancestor, you want to use the blank one. And for another ancestor, you want to use the tree. Maybe you have three different siblings of the same ancestor and you want to give them each a different kind of page just to make sure that you are differentiating whatever you want to do. I am just here to provide you with options. Okay. So let's talk about Roots Tech because Roots Tech is <clears throat> so different this year. You've probably seen a lot about Roots Tech if you follow anybody who is a Roots Tech ambassador. There are a lot of Roots Tech ambassadors again this year. Um, ambassadors just, it's their way of saying that somebody is part of the little media circle for Roots Tech. So if you're a Roots Tech ambassador, we get um, press releases and we get some... <clears throat> Like we get a heads up about information sometimes a day or two before it comes out to the public. But most of the Roots Tech ambassadors, they're just people who are bloggers or people on YouTube, or people on Instagram, um, anybody who has an audience that might be interested in genealogy. Uh, and I, I don't know how many ambassadors there are. I think there's about a hundred of us. That's a total guess. That's me pulling that out of the air. But um, I'm a Roots Tech ambassador again. And it's been interesting to see the things coming out about Roots Tech. I am, of course, disappointed that it's not going to be held in person. And at the same time, I'm, I completely support that. If Roots Tech was happening in person, I wouldn't be able to go. Because um, it's happening in February here in Salt Lake City. And I'm hoping that everything that we're all doing better by February, I really am. But as somebody who's got a high-risk person in my family... We have to be extra careful and I don't, I'm not counting on February being a time where I'm going to be able to feel like I can safely gather with, you know, 5,000 of my closest friends. So the fact that it's happening digitally is exciting. It's just because it's digital and because it's new, we're not sure what it's going to look like. So let me tell you what we know so far. Okay, so Roots Tech is happening in February. It's going from the 25th to the 27th. And the format is similar to the Roots Text if you've been before. And if you haven't been, the good news is it's totally free this year. Um, you don't have to pay at all. You can register right now and it's completely free. And you're going to have access to everything that, I mean, it's free and it's open. It's not like there's a free level and then there's a special level if you, you know, want to be really in the in crowd. It's just free. So there's going to be speakers from all over the place. And I don't mean all over America. I mean all over the world. The way that I understand the format now is that they're, because of um, the, because of how international it's going to be this year, I think it's actually going to kind of follow the sun in the sense that I think new content is going to come out um, like across a 24-hour period from people all over the world. So that's really interesting. I'm not... Um, I mean, the logistical idea, like how they're organizing is just fascinating to me. There is going to be a, an expo hall, but it's going to be a virtual marketplace. Not a lot of information has come out about that. To be honest, as somebody who has a business, I've thought about being a vendor and I haven't completely made up my mind because I don't really understand what the virtual marketplace entails. But I know that you're going to have access to people who are selling things in the genealogy world, there should be, I, I'm positive that there are going to be some demonstrations from businesses just like there are in the expo hall. Um, there will be a way to talk to people, to ask questions, get more information, talk directly to the people that are you know, representing the businesses. So that's exciting, especially for maybe some of the smaller companies that haven't been able to afford to come to Roots Tech and be vendors. I think that it might be more doable and affordable this year. Um, I just don't know a lot about that. And like I said, I've been, I've been toying with the idea of being a vendor, but I haven't made up my mind yet. Um, there will be some cultural activities. I'm assuming that that's going to be in the form of, um, you know, kind of like, what do you call it? I'm thinking of the word exposition and that's not it, but you know, dances or maybe recipes or cooking demonstrations. The fact that we now have this virtual world in which to get together means that people can film themselves 
all over the world doing interesting things that um, represent pieces of their cultural history. So in that sense, I think Roots Tech is going to be fascinating as far as getting to know pieces of our family tree, you know, old world type things for many of us who maybe are a few generations down from people who immigrated from America. We're going to be able to see live demonstrations, people who are still um, in the places or who are closer to the places that were our ancestors came from. I just think that's going to be really interesting. I, <clears throat> somebody who has a lot of Eastern European ancestry, I'm kind of hoping that they have um, quite a few demonstrations from that area. There is going to be a way to chat with attendees. So I love Roots Tech because I have never felt at Roots Tech like I was, like the, I didn't have somebody to talk to. Um, even my first Roots Tech when I hadn't actually started my business and I was just somebody who was attending because I love genealogy and I honestly went to this conference of 5,000 people and didn't know a soul. It doesn't matter where you sit. It doesn't matter who you sit with. People are always happy to talk about their family tree and tell you about their family history. Um, and I'm really going to miss the organic, you know, hey, you have a sandwich, I have a sandwich. Let's talk about the last seven generations of our family. Um, but there's going to be ways to connect with attendees through chat rooms, through different they're they're organizing different ways that we can kind of get together. So I am hoping to make more digital friends this year. Um, I mean, I'm hoping to talk to people also who are interested, of course, in Family Tree Notebooks. But, you know, you guys who are watching me right now on Facebook Live or we found each other. Um, I think that that's great. And this is I I am a very I have a lot of digital or online only friendships that are very important to me. I'm just excited to make more from people who I haven't connected with yet. Um, the other interesting thing about Roots Tech, and I feel like this is a double-edged sword, is that all of the content that happens at Roots Tech is then going to be available to everybody on demand afterwards, which means that if you don't attend Roots Tech, you can get access to the content later. Or if you attend Roots Tech and you loved something, you can watch it again. I love this. I think it completely makes sense. I think it's going to open up genealogical learning and hopefully promote interest to people who aren't sure about, you know, the hobby or don't know a lot about it. I'm just a little worried that it's also going to encourage people to not actually be active during Roots Tech, during the 25th to the 27th of February. So if you're thinking about Roots Tech, I do hope that you clear your schedule and try to participate as much as you can, just as if you were at Roots Tech, just because I feel like the energy, uh, the chance to actually interact with people, um, I think that that makes it special. And as somebody who's taken online classes where I pay for something and then I've got a year to access the content, I think life gets in the way. I think when you tell yourself, oh, okay, great, I have access to this later, I'll do it later. I've noticed that for me, like when I plan things, I'm always like, oh, next week I have nothing going on. This is never true. I run a business and I have three children. I always have something going on. If I do not put it in my calendar and force myself to sit down, I will 100% watch the clock run out in that content. So don't be lulled into a sense of, I don't have to participate in Roots Tech because I'll just learn on my own later. One, your later might not happen. Two, it, it it's... You want to get into it when other people are into it. There's something about being in the bubble. Come be in it. Join us. I'll be in it. Um, you know, follow along on Twitter. Follow along on Instagram. Watch other people as they have fun at Roots Tech. It's just, it's just a good time. So that's my one thing is that I am nervous that people won't be as engaged because it's digital, but I'm really hoping that I'm proved wrong. Also, I feel like by next February, I mean, we've all gotten so comfortable with digital learning. I think it's going to be a lot better than if they had suddenly announced that last year's Roots Tech was digital, you know, right when we were at the cusp of all this pandemic really hitting the United States. Um, I mean, I think, like, I think about how close we were to the pandemic and the fact that we all got together and it kind of makes my heart stop, but nobody, we were fine. Nobody got sick and I'm glad that they didn't make the sharp shift to digital with no warning because I feel like nobody was ready to learn digitally back then. I think that we've all come a long way. Okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I'm sorry, I feel like I've been talking for a little while. I am trying to keep these short. Um, they announced four of the keynote speakers and I wanted to go through them because uh, they're an interesting group of people. There are more keynote speakers coming, but um, these are people that you might not be familiar with. Maybe you're only familiar with one or two, so I wanted to go 
down the list because it's sort of a fun mix of people that like there's one person that I think most people in genealogy know and then maybe a couple people that you haven't heard of so the person that I think that stood out to me is I was like oh a lot of people are going to recognize her is Sharon Morgan if you don't know who she is she's the founder of ourblackancestry.com and she's um she's very involved in uh family history you know African-American, but also just general family history. She teaches, she speaks. Um, she's the author of, or co-author of Gather at the Table, The Healing Journey of a Daughter of Slavery and a Son of the Slave Trade, which I haven't read, but now I'm interested because I want to know more about her before I hear her speak. But I know a lot of people were really excited to see that Sharon Morgan was one of the keynote speakers. Um, she's great and brilliant, and I'm excited to learn more from her. The other woman that they've announced is uh, Lorena Ochoa. She's a pro golfer. But she's not just, I mean, or she's retired now. She's not just a pro golfer. She's one of the best in the world. Um, she's amazing. She retired in her 20s having won all the things and just was generally amazing. Um, she's now a speaker, an entrepreneur. I'm, it's funny because she, she's about my age. And she was, she's from Guadalajara, Mexico, which is somewhere that my parents lived for a while. Um, my dad actually went to medical school in Guadalajara. So... I, not that I see a lot of parallels because she's an amazing, you know, one of the best golfers in the world, but I was kind of interested in seeing her on the list and I want to hear her speak. Um, but yeah, she's incredible. She's hall of fame, super famous, Lorena Ochoa. The other two speakers that they've, um, announced one is Francesco Latoro. So they've listed him as an Italian musicologist on the Roots Tech website. And when I saw that, I was like, I don't, I don't know what that means. Uh, so I looked at him up. He has such an interesting story. So he has, I mean, he's done other things, but he's this Italian man who has spent more than 30 years collecting music from concentration camps that were written by people who were in the concentration camps. And this is not like people left the concentration camps and then wrote symphonies. People inside the concentration camps were writing music on um, scraps of paper, toilet paper, potato sacks. Uh, there was a a person who used charcoal that he was given from the you know the dispensary. He was given charcoal, I think, for his dysentery, and instead of taking it, he used it to write an entire symphony on a scrap of paper. And uh, this person, uh, so Francisco Latoro, he's um. He's gathered it and he plays it and he shares it and he's, you know, transcribed it into music that can be published. And it's this, I I had not thought about musicians under those circumstances being trapped and not being able to share their gift. And he has done this, this mass archival effort to make sure that this music isn't lost. Um, but I th it's such an interesting different kind of, you know, transcription and storytelling because music is such a mood. Um, I just think that that's a really interesting passion and such an important project and one that I never would have thought of. So, uh, so he's, yeah, so he's one of the keynote speakers. I would assume he's going to talk about that. Um, I mean, I think he's a musician on other levels, but that's what his big thing has been. I just think it's so interesting. And then, um, the last person is Nick uh, Vujicic, who I had seen in a different YouTube video, and I didn't realize he was the same person until I was reading more about him. So he's this man from, I think he was born in Australia, but he was born with arms or legs, and he's a motivational speaker, and he's pretty famous and very upbeat, and people love to hear him talk, and... Um, I'm not sure what he's going to talk about as far as genealogy. I don't know if maybe he's just going to talk about, you know, his own story. I don't, some of the Roots Tech speakers that I've seen before, you know, really is just more the inspirational thing. But I, the Roots Tech, there's always such a huge diversity in the speakers. Um, and I do feel like you go to Roots Tech and you go to the classes knowing that you're going to walk away with something tangible that you can do in your own family history research. Like I walked into this room and I didn't have this skill or I didn't have this fact, I didn't have this resource, I'm walking out with it and now I'm better at genealogy. I think the keynote speakers, it's different. I feel like 
if I walk into the keynote speakers expecting to walk out with a new genealogical research skill, I will occasionally be disappointed. If I walk into the keynote speakers, um, you know, as an empty cup, as far as like, there's a Buddhist thing that says you can't walk into a classroom being a full cup of water because as the teacher tries to pour his knowledge into your cup, your cup is already full. You have to walk in with an empty cup. Even if you think you know, there's, you know, like, oh, I know everything there is to know about this. You can't walk in with a full cup. You have to walk into the keynote speakers with an empty cup sometimes and not know what they're gonna give you. Sometimes that's inspiration, sometimes it's just a beautiful story. I loved the photographer that they had at this last Roots Tech um, just because that was such an interesting look at American history. Uh, so yeah, so I'm not going to guess what any of these speakers are going to bring. I'm just gonna tell you, show up, be open. Um, and I do feel like it tends to be kind of, you know, not life-changing in a grand sense necessarily, but the little life-changing pivots where you just think, I am so glad to have encountered that person in their story. Um, you know, I'm so glad that I was here for this. And I like that. I like that they kind of chase the, um, the power of story when they pick their keynotes. So that's my push for Roots Tech. Again, it's free, so there's not a reason for you to not be involved in it. I just... I'm hoping that everybody takes it seriously, even though it's free and open and you can do it in your pajamas. Um, Roots Tech has been very life-changing for me and I'm really excited to have any opportunity to, again, interact with people and be changed by them um, and to learn more because I feel like I go to Roots Tech and I am blown away by how much I don't know about genealogy. And I, that, I mean that in the best way. So um, I'm not teaching at Roots Tech this year. I didn't apply when the call for speakers came out it was back when I wasn't sure if it was going to be digital or not and I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it um but again I will be around as an ambassador I might be around as a vendor still haven't decided I don't know how long I have before that window closes um but obviously I'll also be here on Facebook talking about Roots Tech I'm sure as it's happening so okay well that was me talking for a long time um enjoy your weekend thank you so much for being here and I will talk to you guys on Monday